Hola, buenas tardes. Good afternoon, my beautiful people. Welcome back to my channel. It's so good to see you. Thank you so much for stopping by and spending some time here on my channel with me, your girl, Daniela, aka Danny Bo, aka Miss Four Lizard, aka The Planning Diva, aka The Bookworm 4000. Wow, it's definitely been a while since I filmed a face-to-face -face video. I hope you remember who I am. I've just been super interested and passionate about planning and paper craft and so I've been filming a lot of planning videos so you if you've been watching my videos and my content you'll you would have noticed that you're, you're seeing a lot of my hands lately because I've been doing a lot of plan with me videos but um, I have many interests and if you've been following this channel from the very beginning when I was not even editing and I was filming on the floor of my tiny little North Park apartment <laughs> with the really crappy lighting. If you've been following me since those days, you know that I am a huge reader. I'm a huge bookworm. I love reading. I love books. I love libraries. I love bookstores. I love book clubs. I love everything concerning the written word and I have been itching to do a book video lately and so I saw um, that the mid-year book reading book reader tag is floating around the booktube community I actually saw this video from Eric Carl Anderson here on YouTube He's one of my favorite booktubers and I decided to go ahead and film this mid-year book freakout tag I believe it's called the mid-year book freakout tag but Eric, um, Eric Carl Anderson's YouTube, he said that he didn't really like the title Freakout Tag because it implies that you're behind, that you're freaking out, it doesn't seem super, you know, positive. And I concur, and so I'll definitely just probably call this the Mid-Year Book Tag. Maybe I'll come up with a cuter title, but we'll see. So there are 13 questions in this book tag, and it's all about the books I have been reading, enjoying in the last six months, and what I hope to finish in the upcoming six months which will take us to the year 2022 wild all right so let's begin i have all my notes here in the front so if i'm looking down a lot that's because i have my journal out here with all of my notes i definitely have a very um short attention span and so i definitely need a script at times and actually i'm using my happy planner um i'm currently in my youtube section right now which uh i have all my youtube stuff here so i take all of the notes that i need to take in order to film these videos and everything so i have the tag questions here on paper but uh, if you're interested in hearing what I've been reading, learning about what I've been reading, just keep on watching. And of course this wouldn't be a book video without some libations. I have here an IPA called Cosmic Jungle from the Casa Agria Brewing Company very craft and I really like a strong IPA if you if you have a recommendation for a really bitter really strong really hoppy IPA please leave it down in the comments down below I would love to try it out this one is a little bit too like citrusy and light for my tastes I like them very very bitter like I want my mouth to pucker after you know taking a sip of my IPA all right so the first question of the tag is how many books have you read this year so I have read 14 books this year and my yearly goal is to read 30 books and for some that's a lot, for some that's just a drop in the ocean. Personally, I like to read about 50 books a year but um, being a graduate student I read a lot of scientific journals and papers and so I just don't have the ability to read that many books. I wish I could count all the scientific papers I read as part of my book count but alas. Uh, so 14 out of 30 books that's pretty respectable for me considering how much I read um, you know in addition to my reading for pleasure. I really hope to make that 30 book uh, goal by the end of the year. I, I think I'm on track but barely, barely on track. 
So the second question is, what is your favorite book that you have read thus far in the year 2021? And for me, that is a tie between Audre Lorde's Sister Outsider and Hunter S. Thompson's Fear and Loathing on the Campaign Trail 72. I read both of these on Audible. I listened to them on Audible, and so I do not have the physical copies, but I will put pictures of those book covers here somewhere on the screen so you can see them. So Sister Outsider by Audre Lorde is an iconic piece of literature, and I highly recommend everyone and anyone to read Sister Outsider. I actually listened to Sister Outsider twice because I felt like I needed to listen to it twice in order to really, really capture uh, the essence of that book. It's such a complex piece of work. So it's a piece of nonfiction, it's a nonfiction work, and it is about the experiences of a black lesbian poet in academia and her lived experiences in the world and she has just wonderful cutting edge insights into society, into race, into our constructs of gender and sexuality and it is, whew, it gives, it gives me goosebumps. It gave me goosebumps and it definitely was a highlight of this year. And additionally, I liked Fear and Loathing on the Campaign Trail 72 by Hunter S. Thompson because it was such a fun read. It is gonzo journalism, so it is a journalist on crack. <laughs> um, a journalist just going wild, going completely rogue, and it captured a very interesting time in US history, which was uh, basically the presidential election of 72 between Democratic uh, George McGovern and Republican Richard Nixon. And it was just a very interesting time in history. And I learned a lot about um, politics in that, in that era, as well as just politics in general, about campaigning, about policy, about the ins and outs of the political campaign machinery conglomerate thing and it was all told in a very raw very funny very authentic um gonzo journalism style so that was definitely something i haven't read and so that's why i really liked it so those are my two favorites question number three what is your most disappointing read in the year thus far and this one is a tie between ancient astronomy and i'll pop the the picture here, the cover of the book here, The Secret Life of Bees by Sue Monk Kidd, and Honey Girl by Morgan Rogers. I actually read quite a few disappointing books this year, which is really not like me because I tend to read books that I enjoy, like I can pick them out, I, like I know what I enjoy and what I would like, and I'm really good about picking out books that I know I will like. So. Ancient Astronomy is written by several authors. It's like a collection of papers, essentially, research papers on um, astronomy and ancient cultures. It was disappointing because I, as a scientist myself, like I wanted the articles to be a little bit more well-researched and a little bit more well-written, and I just didn't think um, they met that standard. Unfortunately, I did re I did learn quite a bit, but it really was kind of um, trying to find the good through all the bad, and that was just unfortunate. The Secret Life of Bees by Sue Monk Kidd. I, the only reason I read this is because I'm a bee scientist. I study honeybees. I work with honeybees. I'm a beekeeper, and I just like to read everything and anything that has honeybees like as a main concept, theme, character. And so The Secret Life of Bees was about basically racial dynamics in the South in the 1950s. And the reason why it was disappointing was because I just didn't feel like it truly captured the nuances of race. Um, and it was kind of like a... How do I say this? It was a very like superficial overview of racial um, dynamics, racial tensions, and it really centered on this white teenager and her story and her experience, but at the same time it really wanted to um, capture like the experience of black women, and it's hard to really do that, I think, through the lens of a 15-year-old white girl. I mean, I mean, 
sue me if I'm wrong, but <laughs> I just didn't um, particularly love it. I didn't think it was incredibly well written. The plot was a little bit too unbelievable at times for me to truly get with it. So that was that. And lastly, Honey Girl by Morgan Rogers. I really, really, really wanted to um, like this. Oh, and by the way, so I read Ancient Astronomy on Kindle. I don't have a Kindle, but I have the like the app on my computer desktop. So I read it on my computer, um, the e-copy of it. I read The Secret Life of Bees with a physical copy and then Honey Girl I listened to on Audible. So Honey Girl by Morgan Rogers. Um, yeah, I wanted to like it. I actually read this as part of my book club for my LGBTQIA plus community in grad school and we chose it um, as our monthly book club read. And I did really, really, really want to like this because it is about a black lesbian grad student. Well, actually she just graduated. So it is about a black lesbian PhD in astrophysics and um, her experiences and uh, her journey with her own mental health. And it's kind of uh, has a romance like element to it because the, the whole novel kind of starts from this like crazy Las Vegas trip where Grace Porter, the main character, she ends up going to Vegas and getting married and then like the, the novel like unfolds from there, like why did she get married, who, who did she get married to, and um, there's definitely romantic elements to it, but by and large the novel mainly is about Grace Porter's um, relationship with her own mental health and depression. Well, I like really appreciate what the narrative is and that people who do struggle with mental health might find that narrative and that story inspiring. I personally did not resonate with it as much, maybe because I personally don't struggle with chronic depression. I definitely do experience depressive episodes as I feel like everyone does, um, but I don't have a chronic condition. And on top of that, I also didn't feel like the novel truly captured the nuances of of that condition, honestly. Even as someone who doesn't have that, but has friends who have, you know, chronic depression, um, and I have dated people who've had chronic depression, it just didn't feel like the characters were three-dimensional. They felt more two-dimensional than they felt three-dimensional. And that was unfortunate because I did really want to love this um, diverse lesbian romance. And like, I applaud the author for really trying to grapple with mental health. And it's not an easy topic to, you know, write about. And so I do applaud her efforts, but unfortunately for me, it just did not um, hit the mark. So. Question number four is what genre have you read the most of this year? And I think I haven't counted, but I'm pretty sure that it would be fiction. And yeah, fiction. Question number five is who's your new favorite author? So I would have to say Orhan Pamuk, and that is from reading his novel Snow, which I'm gonna talk about for the next question here. But Orhan Pamuk is a Turkish author who was actually recommended to me from a subscriber here on YouTube. So thank you so, so much for recommending Orhan Pamuk to me. Um, definitely out of the, like came out of the blue, I was shocked at how much I ended up liking his novels and appreciating his style. I'm really excited to read more of Orhan Pamuk and I'm always excited to read um, you know, non-US based authors. So Orhan Pamuk's style was, it's definitely like, I am not so well versed in like uh, different types of like writing and literature, but I would categorize his writing as like postmodern. I don't even know if that's correct. So question number six is what books were surprisingly good? Again, I would have to say, first of all, the book Snow by Orhan Pamuk. And I actually read that one. I read it like kind of hybrid. I had the physical copy and I would read the physical copy at times, but mostly I listened to it on Audible, which I actually really liked that because um, 
I was able to hear the correct pronunciation of different Turkish words and so that was great. So I really really liked Snow and it was surprisingly good because when I was first starting that book and then when I casually flipped through it, the writing to me seemed very um, very classic. It was very descriptive, it was very eloquent and for me it read like a classic piece of literature. It didn't seem modern to me at all but then the more I read the book the more I got into it. Um, the language itself remained pretty classic, I would say, like the, the phrases, the prose, um, the dialogue, for me it was all very classic, but the plot devices, the narrative, um, the, the techniques the author used, uh, very, very postmodern, very fresh, experimental, um, exciting, novel, new, and so that, that was definitely a surprise for me and I really enjoyed it. So the second book that I found uh, that was surprisingly good, Kristen Hanna's The Nightingale. And yeah, this was a chunky book and it was recommended to me by my boyfriend's dad actually. And I have never read anything by Kristen Hanna and so, or is it Hannah? Kristen Hanna? I've never read anything by Kristen Hanna and she doesn't seem like someone I would go out of my way to read, but Again, surprisingly good. Um, I didn't like absolutely love the book, but I was surprised I liked it as much as I did because I went into it kind of thinking that it was gonna be like, you know, a sappy, dramatic, historical fiction novel with romance in it, very much like a beach read, very casual. And while it does definitely have that style and spirit, I think it was very well um, historically researched and I did learn quite a bit about the resistance movement in France and specifically the role that women played in the resistance against, um, against the oppressive Nazi regime. So, all right. So the next question, question number seven is your most anticipated release for the rest of the year. And I just have to say, I really don't know. I don't really keep up with releases. I just kind of read whatever I feel like reading and I tend to read books that have been released for a while. So I don't know. Question number eight. What is a big priority to read for the uh, upcoming year? And I know exactly what book that is. This bad boy here, 100 Years of Socialism, the West European Left in the 20th Century by Donald Sassoon. This thing is gigantic and my friend um, actually lent this huge tome to me because he knows I'm super interested in socialism and, um, and in the philosophy and the practice behind it. And I have been really, really wanting to educate myself more on socialism as like in terms of both the politics and the economic implications of it and just understanding the history surrounding socialism more because politically I lean pretty socialist. Um, I definitely agree with a lot of socialist philosophy and thinking and so I just want to educate myself more on um, on just the history of socialism. So that thing is just sitting on my bookshelf and I just I know that it's gonna take me forever to read. Hopefully I will be able to finish it by the end of the year. Question number nine was, what was your bookish highlight of the year? And that would definitely be the book clubs that I've participated in this year, particularly the ones that we are fortunate enough to meet in person, um, you know, and try to just gather after coronavirus. Uh, one of my book clubs actually met in person, which was fantastic. And I also have like a cute casual book club with one of my best friends, uh, Miss Gracia in Texas. And so just the book club culture that I have been really leaning into this year because reading is such a like isolated and individual activity. And as a social extrovert myself, I find it difficult to like engage in something that's so so like individually like oriented and so just the book clubs the book clubs that I've been um, part of this year question number 10 is a book that you need to complete this year and that would probably be braiding sweet grass by Robin I forget her last name but Robin braiding sweet grass 
Braiding Sweetgrass. We all know that book and I'm sure, you know, we all love it as well. So I actually started reading this with my boyfriend. We were reading it together. We would read it together. We would read it out loud to each other before bed and we just kind of stopped because we would always fall asleep. All right, all right, all right. I would always fall asleep and so he would always have to like go back and read like a couple of pages and so I think he got a little bit tired of that and also just it's hard to like uh incorporate that practice especially if you're just like always tired from the work day and you just knock out as soon as you get into bed so that's definitely still a book that I would like to finish so I might bug my boyfriend about finishing that question number 11 is what is the best classic book that you have read so far and I don't, you know, read a lot of classics, but I think I read two this year. I read Lord of the Flies by William Golding, and I read Fear and Loathing on the Camping Trail, 72 by Hunter S. Thompson, which, you know, debatable whether it is a true classic or not, but I think it's such an iconic book, and honestly, I think it's a classic. Um, Lord of the Flies, it was all right. <laughs> I wasn't a huge fan of it. And so I would have to say Fear and Loathing on the Campaign Trail by Hunter S. Thompson, if that counts as a classic, which I think it should. And yeah, I just love that book for all the reasons I previously described. Question at number 12 is the last uh, question in this tag that Eric Carl Anderson came up with, but I have a bonus one, so just hold on a minute. So question number 12 is who do you tag? And I definitely am tagging Ingrid from Books and Beauty. I just subscribed to her channel and I think she has um, a great personality and wonderful content and I love seeing all the books that she picks up. So I tag Books and Beauty to do this tag. So question number 13 is not a tag question that Eric Carl Anderson had in his original tag video, but I just wanted to add another question onto here be just because um, just to have some fun with it. So definitely uh, feel free to make question 13 any question that you want. This is just the question that I decided to put in question 13. So question 13 is, do you have a reading journal? If so, what is it? What kind? Do you use it? Etc. And I do have a reading journal. I actually have it right here in front of me. And I had... I used a reading journal off and on for the last couple of years, mostly off. <laughs> I would just have a regular notebook and I would write in it any thoughts and ideas and anything that I was thinking about when it came to whatever it was I was reading. I would just have a regular notebook and I would write in it. And I just didn't really use it, even though I wanted to use it. It just I just nothing it didn't click with me like I would forget about it and if you have been on my channel for a bit you know that I am a happy planner I have um, a happy planner so this is one of my happy planners and I have different sections in my happy planner and I have a reading section that I made in my happy planner and um, so it has a traditional planner format and I use it as a reading journal and every day I try to write a little bit um, about whatever it is I'm reading. So this is what it looks like here. So the section starts, um, so this is the, pre the section before and then I have a piece of scrapbook paper that separates uh, my reading section from the other sections in the planner. I have a bunch of book related stickers on the back of the scrapbook paper. And then this is what the planner pages look like. So this is the end of a week. Um, and I don't have all of the months in of this planner, like in the in this entire planner. I just have the month of June for every section. I have a couple of planners in this one planner that are all combined together. And I just have one month per section. So I have just the month of July in here for my reading section. So you, we have like a monthly overview page that I use to write down vocabulary I'm learning as well as notes on books that I, um, I, I discover and I want to read. I'll write them down here. And then we have the divider for the month. And then we have the monthly calendar view where I'll write like my book club meetings as well as days that I start a book or I finish a book. I'll put those in here. And then we just have the weekly calendar view. And this type of planner has this horizontal style where all the days are like a 
horizontal section and it's lined so it's really really wonderful for writing and I like to put stickers on it and decorate it and I will just write in it and some weeks I'll definitely write less than others and so this is the current week here I have my divider um, just my bookmark I mean marking the spot where I am in this reading journal so in this week you can definitely see I have written a lot more I've written every single day and this reading journal just helps me like engage with what I'm reading more and it helps me just to like remember and interact with whatever it is I'm reading to a greater extent sometimes I swear I just read so much that it goes like one in one year and then out the other year and this really helps me to like retain a lot of that information and I, I write down quotes that really move me I just journal about whatever it is I'm reading and how I am reacting to it my emotions my feelings reviews on books I'll, I'll just write anything and everything in this reading journal and I just really really enjoy it all right so that was it for this mid-year uh, freak out tag this mid-year check-in tag and let me know what you thought. Have you read any of these books that I mentioned? If so, what did you think about them? The girl wants to know. Leave any thoughts in the comments down below and I will catch you in my next video. I'll see you later, alligator. Adios.